Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Grizzly K and today we're going to be looking at the update in the Petito and Laundry lawsuit. Yes, it's just a little bit of a restructure of some of the sentences in preparation for the upcoming trial, which is, I believe, in August of 2023. So we're going to put that in our calendars for next year. But I thought we could go through this together and just look at the changes. So let's get started. that question is still valid will we ever know what really happened I mean there's still things that bug me about the case of course like what Brian Laundrie did between the 17th and the 23rd of August last year all kinds of stuff I, I don't want to bring up all the questions again because I know we brought that up uh, many times we've asked ourselves we've had live streams about it if you missed out on the entire Gabby Petito case I would highly recommend checking out my playlist because I definitely covered that one in a deep dive where every single day, almost every hour at a stage, there was news breaking about the case. Of course, it ended up in very sad news of Gabby Petito being found deceased at the Spread Creek Dispersed Camp in Wyoming. But even since then, man, this case, there's things that people still send me that I'm like, yeah, what was that? Like, what exactly was that? But anyway, uh, let us have a look at this document now. Um, in the circuit court of the 12th Judicial Circuit in and for Sarasota County, Florida, Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt. Uh, so that's Gabby Petito's biological parents, plaintiffs versus Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry, Brian Laundry's parents. Case number 2022CA1128SC. Uh, so those are the defendants, right? The Laundries. Amended complaint. Come now, Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt by and through the undersigned counsel and file within the amended complaint against the defendants, Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry, and in support thereof, allege as follows. There is an action for damages that exceed $30,000 exclusive of pre-judgment interest, cost, and attorney fees. The venue is proper in Sarasota County, Florida, because the defendants reside herein. This court has jurisdiction over the within matter pursuant of S, uh, FS 26.012 dot. <laughs> the plaintiff Joseph Petito is a resident of Vero Beach, Florida and is the father of Gabrielle Petito deceased. Plaintiff Nicole Schmidt is a resident of Blue Point, New York and is the mother of Gabrielle Petito deceased. Defendants Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry are residents of Northport, Florida and are the parents of Brian Laundry deceased. Filed 04-28-2022 at 5.26 p.m. Karen E. Rushing Clerk of the Circuit Court, Sarasota County, Florida. Okay, so they say here, Brian Laundry and Gabriel Petito became engaged to marry on or about July 2nd, 2020. On July 2nd, 2021, like literally one year anniversary since being engaged, Brian Laundrie and Gabrielle Petito left New York in a van owned by Gabrielle Petito to take a trip to the Western United States, which was expected to last for several months. Prior to the trip taken by Gabrielle Petito and Brian Laundrie, Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt and Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie had a cordial relationship. Gabrielle Petito had hopes of becoming a travel influencer, a van lifer, and document her cross-country travels on social media sites such as YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. During the course of the aforementioned trip, Gabrielle Petito called her family almost daily, including her parents, Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt, and her siblings. The last communication that Gabrielle Petito had with Joseph Petito was on August 21st, 2021. The last communication that Nicole Schmidt had with Gabrielle Petito was on August 27th, 2021. It is believed that on August 27, 2021, Brian Laundrie murdered Gabrielle Petito. The cause of her death was blunt force injuries to the head and neck with manual strangulation. Gabrielle Petito was 22 years at the age, oh, sorry, at the time of her death. 
Oh my word, she was so young. After Brian Laundrie murdered Gabrielle Petito, Brian Laundrie sent text messages back and forth between his cell phone and Gabrielle Petito's cell phone in an effort to hide the fact that she was deceased. I hope we're going to get to see those texts because can you imagine? I'm still thinking that he would have simulated a fight or a breakup or something. On August 27, 2021, it is believed that Brian Laundrie sent a text to Nicole Schmidt in which he referred to Gabrielle Petito's grandfather, Stan, by name. Gabrielle Petito never called her grandfather by his name. It is believed and therefore appeared that on or about August 28, 2021, Brian Laundrie advised his parents, Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie, that he had murdered Gabrielle Petito. On that same date, Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie spoke with attorney Steve Berlino and sent him a retainer on September 2nd, 2021. A lot of people have asked, like, how would they know that they knew? But I suppose their actions show it because maybe they've got evidence that Brian called his parents and then on the same day, they're already calling Stephen Berlino. On August 30th, 2021, Brian Laundrie sent a text message from Gabrielle Petito's cell phone to Nicole Schmidt stating that there was no service in Yosemite Park in an effort to deceive Nicole Schmidt into believing that Gabrielle Petito was still alive. On September 1st, 2021, Brian Laundrie returned to the home of his parents, Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie, driving Gabrielle Petito's van. After this point in time, there was no contact between Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt, on the one hand, and Christopher Laundrie and Roberta on the other. From August 27, 2021 until September 19, 2021, when Gabrielle Petito's remains were found at the Spread Creek Dispersed Camping Area in Wyoming, plaintiffs were extremely distraught and were attempting to locate Gabrielle Petito. While Gabrielle Petito's family was suffering, the Laundrie family, this is the new sentence, went on vacation to Fort DeSoto Park on September 6 to 7, 2021. They went on vacation knowing that Brian Laundrie had murdered Gabrielle Petito. It is believed that they knew where her body was located and further knew that Gabrielle Petito's parents were attempting to locate her. In an effort to avoid any contact with Nicole Schmidt, on or about September 10th, 2021, Roberta Laundrie blocked Nicole Schmidt on her cellular phone such that neither phone calls nor texts could be delivered and she blocked her on Facebook. On September 14th, 2021, with full knowledge that Gabrielle Petito had been murdered by their son. Still, I want to know how they know that. Despite, yeah, we can see by the actions, I suppose. It is believed that they knew the whereabouts of her body. Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie, through their lawyer, issued the following statement. It is our understanding that a search has been organized for Miss Petito in or near Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. On behalf of the Laundrie family, it is our hope that the search for Miss Petito is successful and that Miss Petito is reunited with her family. For the Laundries to express their hope that Gabrielle Petito was located and reunited with her family at a time when they knew she had been murdered by their son was beyond outrageous. Of course, a lot of people have speculated they might have meant that her body is reunited with her family at that point, if they knew. On September 16th, 2021, attorney Richard Stafford, on behalf of Gabrielle Petito's family, issued a letter to Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie as follows. We are writing this letter to ask you to help find our beautiful daughter. We understand you are going through a difficult time and your instinct to protect your son is strong. We ask you to put yourselves in our shoes. We haven't been able to sleep or eat and our lives are falling apart. We believe you know the location of where Brian left Gabby. We beg you to tell us, as a parent, how could you let us go through this pain and not help us? As a parent, how can you put Gabby's younger brothers and sisters through all of this? Gabby lived with you for over a year. She was going to be your daughter-in-law. How can you keep her location hidden? You were both at Jim and Nicole's house. You were both so happy and that Brian and Gabby got engaged and we and were planning to spend their lives together. Please, if you or your family have any decency left, please tell us where Gabby's located. Tell us if we are even looking in the right place. All we want is Gabby to come home. Please help us make that happen. Despite the fact that Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt implored Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie to tell them if their daughter was alive and if she was not, where her remains were located, Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie refused to respond to either Joseph Petito or Nicole Schmidt. Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie instructed that all contacts were to be made through their attorney, Stephen P. Berlino, and he issued no comment when asked about Gabrielle Petito's well-being. While Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt were desperately searching for information concerning their daughter, Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie were keeping the whereabouts of Brian Laundrie secret and it is believed were making arrangements for him to leave the country. 
Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry knew of the mental suffering and anguish of Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt in not knowing the well-being or location of their daughter, and further knew that such mental suffering and anguish increased each day that Gabrielle Petito was missing. Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry further knew that they could prevent such additional mental suffering and anguish of Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt by disclosing what they knew about the well-being and location of the remains of Gabriel Petito, yet they repeatedly refused to do so. In doing so, Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry acted with malice or great indifference to the rights of Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt. Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry exhibited extreme and outrageous conduct which constitutes behaviour under the circumstances which goes um, beyond all possible bounds of decency and is regarded as shocking, atrocious and utterly intolerable in a civilised community, including, and without limitation, failing to advise Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt that Gabrielle Petito was deceased, failing to disclose to Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt the location of Gabrielle Petito's body, taking a family vacation with their son who had murdered Gabriel Petito while Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt were desperately seeking her whereabouts, blocking access to their cell phone and Facebook page to preclude Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt from getting information regarding Gabriel Petito, issuing a press release expressing hope that the search for Miss Petito is successful and that Miss Petito is reunited with her family, knowing full well that Gabriel Petito was deceased. Count 1. Joseph Petito versus Christopher Laundry. Joseph Petito hereby restates and incorporates paragraphs 1 through 32 above as though fully set forth herein, as a direct and proximate result of the willfulness and maliciousness of Christopher Laundry, Joseph Petito has been caused to suffer pain and suffering, mental anguish, inconvenience, loss of capacity for enjoyment of life experienced in the past and to be experienced in the future. That's new too. Well, Joseph Petito to Christopher Laundry. Wherefore, plaintiff Joseph Petito respectfully requests this honourable court to enter judgment in his favour and against the defendant Christopher Laundry and award to him just compensation for the damages he has suffered together with costs and such other relief as this honourable court deems just and appro appropriate. Count 2. Joseph Petito versus Roberta Laundry. Joseph Petito hereby restates and incorporates paragraphs 1 through 32 above as though fully set forth herein. As a direct and proximate result of the willfulness and maliciousness of Roberta Laundry, Joseph Petito has been caused to suffer pain and suffering, mental anguish, inconvenience, loss of capacity for enjoyment of life experienced in the past and to be experienced in the future. Wherefore, plaintiff Joseph Petito respectfully requests this honourable court to enter judgment in his favour and against the defendant, Roberta Laundry, and award to him just compensation for the damages he has suffered, together with costs and such other relief as this honourable court deems just and appropriate. Count 3. Nicole Schmidt versus Christopher Laundry. Nicole Schmidt hereby states, uh, restates and incorporates paragraphs 1 through 32 above as though fully set forth herein. As a direct and proximate result of the willfulness and maliciousness of Christopher Laundry, Nicole Schmidt has been caused to suffer pain and suffering, mental anguish, inconvenience, loss of capacity for enjoyment of like life experienced in the past and to be experienced in the future. Wherefore, plaintiff Nicole Schmidt respectfully requests this honourable court enter judgment in her favour and against the defendant Christopher Laundry and award to her just compensation for the damages she has suffered together with costs and such other relief as this honourable court deems just and appropriate. And of course, count four, Nicole Schmidt versus Roberta Laundry. Nicole Schmidt hereby restates and incorporates paragraphs 1 through 32 above as though fully set forth herein. As a direct and proximate result of the willfulness and maliciousness of Roberta Laundry, Nicole Schmidt has been caused to suffer pain and suffering, mental anguish, inconvenience, loss of capacity for enjoyment of life experienced in the past and to be experienced in the future. Wherefore, plaintiff Nicole Schmidt respectfully requests this honourable court enter judgment in her favour and against the defendant Roberta Laundry and award to her just compensation for the damages she has suffered, together with costs and such other relief as this Honourable Court deems just and appropriate. This is now filed by Patrick J. Riley, Esquire, Florida Bar Number. So that's the lawyer there, page 8. And we've got the Certificate of Service. I hereby certify that a true copy of the foregoing has been electronically filed on this 28th day of April 2022 with the Clerk of Court via the e-filing portal system, which will simultaneously email the same to P. Matthew Luca. Trombley and Haynes, PA, in Franklin Street, Tampa, Florida. 
by utilizing the designation of electronic mail addresses registered with the e-filing portal system. And that is that. So to summarize, of course, they now individually, you know, they split up the charges from Joseph Petito versus Christopher Laundry, Joseph Petito versus Roberta Laundry, Nicole Schmidt versus Christopher Laundry, Nicole Schmidt versus Roberta Laundry. So there's that. And then, of course, the knowledge that the laundries allegedly had and then went on holiday to Fort DeSoto. Had some s'mores around the campfire. I wish Cassie would talk, huh? Like, what does she have to say now? I think it would be interesting to hear what she has to say now, especially about the Fort DeSoto camping time. Like, really, were there no conversations had? Was anything shared? Now that she knows, in hindsight, what happened, any information that could be helpful? Wow. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you so much again to everyone who sent me these updates as well. I've also been following the news. Sometimes it feels like, really, is there something here that I can report? But I guess this is a valid update and we are following the case. So feel free to send me more updates if you see them. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If this was your very first time stumbling upon one of my videos, I hope that you will consider subscribing, hitting the bell so you get all notifications for when I next go live or upload a video. And I hope that you will uh, leave your DNA on the thumbs up and leave a comment below. Okay, I will see you very soon. Thank you for watching.